guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing a quick little review on e.l.f. Cosmetics. I placed an order a couple of weeks ago. Those products came in. I've been trying them out. So I thought I would do a little review for you guys and just share my thoughts on the products that I did purchase. So with that being said, let's just keep the intro short and sweet and let's go ahead and get started with the review. I did pick up six items off the e.l.f. Australian website. I am not Australian by the way, I'm a Kiwi. I live in New Zealand but that's where I can purchase my e.l.f. products so if you guys live in New Zealand and don't know where you can get e.l.f. they do have an Australian site that does ship to New Zealand and I think if you spend over 30 Australian dollars it is free shipping. And I got the six products for about 50 Australian dollars which is so affordable you guys like Hello. I don't know why I don't purchase off e.l.f. more often. I feel like that's definitely going to change after this haul. I picked up six items, so there's going to be six little mini reviews in today's video. And the first product that I want to review is their 16 hour camo concealer. I got mine in the shade light beige and this is 10 Australian dollars. I will just read out some of the claims that they have for this concealer. So there are 26 shades for this concealer. They're saying it's a full coverage concealer, which I would probably have to agree Agree with. Um, you will see in the cutaway that I use this to cover up some of my breakouts and there was a lot of redness in that and I felt like it did cover that up pretty well. You can't really see the redness so I would say yes definitely more on the full coverage side. It has a large doe foot applicator. It is very similar to the Tarte Shape Tape applicator. It's huge. I love that. And this is for normal to oily skin and it has a matte finish and the drying time is very quick. All of those claims I would have to agree with. I think the drying time on this concealer is insane. I've never used a concealer that dries down this quick. If you guys are new to my channel, my favorite concealer is the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. It's my favorite all-time concealer. I use it literally every single day. When I wear makeup, I'm wearing that concealer. So with that concealer, I will apply it everywhere I need it. Like I'll apply it under my eyes, over my acne scars, just like pretty much all over my face. And that can dry down for a fair amount of time. Like I will apply it underneath my eyes first, over my acne scars, and then I'll blend out the concealer that's on my face and then underneath my eyes. And there's no problem with that. And that's what I usually do with all my concealers. And that's what I did with this concealer for the first time. And that did not work out. This dries down so quick that you need to apply this and then blend it out straight away or if you don't if you apply like a little circle here that circle is going to stay like that it's going to dry down like that and it's going to be very hard to blend so I would recommend that you apply and blend right away and I would also recommend you use a sponge that holds a lot more water I've been using a microfiber sponge recently and a microfiber sponge isn't as damped as a traditional sponge so I would say go in with traditional sponge and I would also agree with the claim that this is targeted to more normal to oily skin. I'm gonna say oily skin because this is pretty matte. I feel like this is a concealer that you don't need to sit down. I did sit it down but I will show you guys what it looks like without setting it and when it is set but because it dries down so quick I feel like you don't need to set this concealer down so I feel like for oily skin this is probably very ideal for you because it is a matte finish. It's not drying at all. I personally have combination skin so I have dry and oily skin. I used to have very oily skin but I think the older that I'm getting my skin is changing but underneath my eyes it is pretty dry and my t-zone can be quite oily. It's not as oily as it used to be but my under eyes are dry and that's where I use the concealer the most and I don't feel like it clings on to my dry patches so maybe if you did have dry skin maybe you could use it but I feel like it might uh, I don't know just be a little bit too matte for you I would say this is perfect for an oily skin gal that needs a full coverage concealer for me who's someone that's in between I still like my Too Faced one better my under eyes are pretty dry I have fine lines underneath there I prefer a concealer that's a little bit more hydrating a little bit more creamy but nonetheless it is a good concealer I think for 10 Australian dollars it's probably like five or six US dollars very affordable I think it is a really great concealer for oilier skin. And the next item I picked up is their bite size eyeshadow. I got mine in the shade pumpkin pie and this is seven US dollars and there are eight different palettes in total. These are so tiny and so cute. For reference, I have an iPhone 7 plus 
and if you were to compare it side by side it is literally half the size of it it's probably like the same width of an iPhone 7 just a little bit longer super tiny so it is perfect for travel and I think that's what they intended this palette to be for is to travel with um, because it's literally like the tiniest thing ever I know that these bite shadow palettes have been pretty hyped up recently a lot of you guys have been asking me to try it out review it and I was thinking about getting all eight doing a look for every single one of them but I thought I would just try out one first and see how it goes because I have tried ALF's eyeshadow before in the past it was like I think it's been about like three years I tried their matte for matte palette and I just thought they were okay after trying out the bite size I still think they are okay shadows especially the matte so you have two mattes in here you get a transition shadow and a dark brown I think the transition is good I mean like the shadows work really well the blendable the pigmented the smooth there's minimal fallout but I feel like when it comes to the mattes it's just missing something it is missing that extra like oomph of pigmentation like it's just so weird when you swatch it it's pigmented when you apply it to your eyes it's pigmented but I just feel like there's just something missing and I just don't know what it is but it's just missing something especially the dark brown um, I just feel like it's just lacking that extra oomph I have the same feeling towards the wet and wild eyeshadows for seven Australian dollars it is really affordable I mean like it's beautiful you can get beautiful looks out of it I use this palette for my ABG look and I loved it I don't know if I'm just being really picky there's just something missing that I just needed something extra from this palette I think the metallics are really nice but then I also think metallics aren't really that hard to get wrong you know what I mean seven Australian dollars it's an amazing little palette and I don't want to be too picky because it's so affordable but if I'm being honest um, it was just lacking a little something something for me I also picked up this little glitter liquid eyeshadow in the shade flirty birdie this is 10 Australian dollars and this also comes in eight different shades I will quickly read out what it says on the elf website it says that this is long-lasting it's quick drying you can get a one swipe glitter coverage so I actually haven't worn this for a long Long period of time to claim if it is long wearing so I will wear my makeup throughout the day and then I will write a little quick update in my description box if it does last long like it's claiming for this specific product I would use this more as an eyeshadow topper because I think if you were to use the doe foot applicator that it comes in and you're to swipe it on your eyes like it's claiming like a one swipe opaque eyeshadow if you have eyeshadow underneath that it's going to lift that product up and it's going to create a patchy looking eye look personally wouldn't use a doe foot applicator and I personally would not swipe once because it's going to look very patchy because the glitter is thicker I would recommend using your finger and just tap that on to your lid and then maybe you can go in with a brush to really spread out those glitters and when it says opaque it is opaque there is like a light you know bronzy undertone to it but I'm gonna mainly use this for the little specks of glitters and just dab that on to my eyes and I think it's really pretty the little glitters are pretty big well not big but like they're very visible they're not very fine but they don't feel gritty I I don't feel like I have glitter on my eyes so they're not uncomfortable so overall I really like this little glitter eyeshadow I want to try out more of their shades and just have like a little glitter collection um, because I really do feel like it can take a basic eye look to the next level like it just sparkles through and there is very minimal fallout with this I think I had like two little glitter fallout and that was it so overall really enjoyed this I think the gel base really gets it stuck onto your lid so you don't need to go in with like a glitter primer or like a glitter glue if you do have like loose glitter for example and the next product that I picked up is their primer infused bronzer mine is in the shade perpetually tan and this is 13 Australian dollars it comes in three different shades and I really enjoyed this bronzer I thought it was very smooth to blend out I feel like it's a gradual build-up bronzer so you can get like a very sun-kissed look and the shade of this is super warm so I think it's perfect for the summertime I probably wouldn't wear it like as my everyday bronzer because I feel like it is quite warm but I feel like it's a really nice warm shade against my skin tone so I really like that and just overall I feel like it looks really good on the skin it lasts throughout the day I definitely want to check out their other shades and see if I can get one that's not as warm but nonetheless I really like it I think it looks very smooth doesn't look patchy so 
I really like the bronzer. I then picked up their Seriously Satin Lipstick in the shade Nicta, and this is six Australian dollars. I actually really like the clear packaging. Some people might say it looks a little bit cheap, but I like that aesthetic. 3C is coming out with a whole clear packaging collection, which looks so pretty. I like how you can see the shade inside, and the shade, by the way, is beautiful. If you guys love Rise and Shine Just a Tint Lip Crown from ColourPop, this is that shade in a lipstick. It's so pretty, and you guys know me, I don't mess with matte lip products. I go for satins, I go for creamy products, and this is just a beautiful lip color that's very comfortable, not drying, pigmented. So overall, for six Australian dollars, this is probably about like three USD. It's a really great product. And the last product for today's haul slash review is their Lip Lacquer. And I got mine in the shade Moody, which I love. Judy Moody, that's my Animal Crossing name. And it's just like the username that I go to a lot. Judy Moody, my gaming username. Not that I really game. But this is also six Australian dollars and they have seven different shades. So Moody specifically is an opaque gloss. So you could apply this on its own just straight on your lips and it will cover up your natural lip color or you can apply it on top of a lipstick and I will show you both ways in the cutaways. I also use this gloss in my ABG look as well um, and I applied that on top of a different matte liquid lipstick. So if you want to see that, check out that video. I think the formulation reminds me a lot of of the Luxe Gloss from ColourPop. It's not too shiny, but it's enough shine and it's not sticky. It does have such a yummy scent to it. It sort of reminds me of the ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip in the High Shine formulation, that really caramel, bakery, sweet scent, which I love. I'm wearing it on its own right now and I love that. This is like my new Go to gloss. All right, you guys, so those were the six products that I picked up from e.l.f. Let me know down below what other products are your favorites and you want me to try out. I honestly haven't tried that many products out from e.l.f., so I'm really curious to hear your recommendations and I'll definitely pick them up. And maybe we can do a part two to e.l.f. or maybe we can do like a full phase of e.l.f. cosmetics or something like that. Just drop your recommendations down below because I'm hooked. This is an affordable brand. I don't know why I didn't jump on it sooner. If you guys did enjoy this little review, be sure to give the video a thumbs up for me. I would appreciate it so much. It helps with the algorithm and it just helps getting my video out to more people. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.